Welcome back, rockers. You're here with the only show that is all things music. And we've got some exciting music news for you in this episode. Also, be sure to stay tuned for a performance by EJ. We'll be right back. On Tuesday, September 25th, an exhibit dedicated to Aretha Franklin opened to the public at the Charles H. Rist Museum of African American History. The exhibit's name is Think, a tribute to the Queen of Soul. The exhibit will be open until January 21st, 2019. It will feature many of Aretha Franklin's clothes and shoes, along with videos, photos, displaying moments from Franklin's career. The exhibit will also include the first recording Franklin released in 1956 of her Never Grow Old vinyl. The Charles H. Rist Museum, where the exhibit is to be located, also hosted Aretha Franklin's public viewing after the Queen of Soul died at age 76 of pancreatic cancer. The same outfit she wore at the viewing is featured at her exhibit as the red lace trim ruffled suit and crimson satin pumps. Over the four months of the exhibit, they plan to rotate items in out of order to display a reflection of the changing dynamics over the span of Franklin's life. The Franklin Estate also announced that they will be creating a long-term exhibit dedicated to Aretha in 2020, with the location yet to be determined. The, le the legacy of the Queen of Soul will be forever remembered thanks to the help of these upcoming exhibits. Multiple journalists from the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, or CBC, reported that on September 20th, Ticketmaster has embedded a secret tool called Trade Desk that aids scalpers in reselling tickets. Ticketmaster is well known for its live event box office and strict rules against reselling tickets. Something like this, though, would apparently benefit Ticketmaster. Hidden cameras were placed at Ticket Summit 2018, a trade convention this past July at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Two of the reporters from CBC went undercover as professional resellers for this event and obtained access to online video conferences with Trade Desk a few months ago. A Ticketmaster employee from the video conference a few months ago also claimed that there were, that 100 resellers using Trade Desk each sold anywhere from a few thousand to a few million tickets per year. When being questioned about these findings by the CBC, Ticketmaster refused to respond on the record to questions, but offered a statement that says, Ticketmaster is a technology platform that helps artists and teams connect with their fans. We do not own the tickets sold on our platform, nor do we have any control over the ticket pricing, either in initial sale or resale. How do you guys feel about this information on Ticketmaster? Do you think it's right or wrong to resell these tickets? Let us know at IRB TV. The fact that they're making multiple exhibits to honor Aretha Franklin will definitely help her be remembered as the Queen of Soul for decades to come. She really was an inspiration to a lot of soul music throughout history, and even today. Aretha was a wonderful artist. I wonder how she would feel about people reselling her tickets to fans who want to see their favorite artists. I'm not sure, but Ticketmaster is going to get a lot of heat for this, especially since it seems so hypocritical of them. Definitely hypocritical, since they mentioned specifically in their policies how resale violates their guidelines. Maybe they just like to bend the rules. Anyways, up next is Music Lesson with Nick. What's up, rockers? And today on Music Lesson, we're going to be learning Give It All by Rise Against. So you want to be in standard tuning. And you're mainly going to be using the uh, last four strings. So six, five, four, and three. So the first part, or the intro of the song, you want to start out by putting your index finger on the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then your pinky finger on the seventh fret on the fourth string. So then switch it up so your middle finger is on the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then your index finger is on the third fret on the fourth string. And then a power chord uh, with your index finger on the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then your ring finger on the sixth fret on the fourth string. And then you just want to bar the fourth fret on the fifth and fourth string. So you want to play that twice, and that is the intro part of the song. So. And then from there, it's all just power chords for the verse and the pre-chorus of the song. So you want to play the power chord on the second and fourth fret on the sixth and fifth string. You want to play it, you want to strum it twice and then mute it twice, like so. So you want to do that three times. Once you do that, you want to play the power chord on the 5th fret and the 7th fret 
on the fifth and the fourth string, and you want to play it four times. So you play, you play that whole section three times. After the third time, you play the power chord on the fifth fret four times, and then you slide up to the power chord on the seventh fret, and then you play that four times. Then you switch, you go back to the power chord on the second fret on the sixth string, but you play it twice and then switch to the power chord uh, open sixth and then second fret on the fifth string. And then just like the previous part, you wanna play this part three times and then back up to the fifth fret. Power chord on the fifth fret on the fifth string. And then that's how you play the intro, the verse, and the pre-chorus. So let's just play that all together real quick. And that's how you play Give It All by Rise Against. We'll see you next week, rockers. It's been almost three years where we're getting a new album from the Boston-based metalcore band Ice Nine Kills. Their fifth studio album is set to be released on October 5th and is titled The Silver Scream. Four singles have been released so far titled Enjoy Your Slay, The American Nightmare, Thank God It's Friday, and A Grave Mistake. Similar to their previous album, Every Trick in the Book, all of the songs are based off of a story. For the previous album, all the songs were based on popular books from all different eras, but The Silver Scream is based on horror movies, and when you listen to the singles and watch the music videos, you can tell. A Nightmare on Elm Street Halloween and Friday the 13th are just a few of the movies that are inspired The Silver Scream. This album also pushes the boundaries of subgenres in metal, where the band mixes metalcore, symphonic metal, post-hardcore, and add melodic elements as well. This definitely shows that these guys are well versed in their music knowledge. Let us know what you think of the upcoming album from Ice Nine Kills on Facebook and Twitter at IRBTV. After two tours and a year-long hiatus, 21 Pilots is back with their fifth studio album, Trench, which is set to be released October 5th and has been preceded by four singles. Jumpsuit, Nico and the Niners, Levitate, and My Blood are all available to listen to right now. And I've got to say, there's still that classic 21 Pilots in these songs but they have really improved on their writing and the quality of their music. Shortly after the album release, Tyler and Josh are going on another world tour to support the new album, starting in Nashville and ending in Lisbon, Portugal. These albums deal with a mix of emotions as they cover many different topics with each song. They sing about resisting the music industry and doing what they want. Also, how Tyler has dealt with his insecurities and getting over them. Josh Dunn also told Alternative Press that another reason for taking some time off was to see who would stick around and wait for the band to release new music. Because naturally, if there's not something that's in your face, they're going to stray away a little bit, which is fine, and that's normal. This is amazing. We're going to be getting two awesome albums on the same day. I know. I can't wait for the new album by Ice Nine Kills. And I'm so excited for new 21 Pilots. I know. It's crazy. Both bands have such a devoted fan base. It's really insane. And the fact that people will wait years to hear new music from their favorite artists is incredible. All right. Stay tuned, because up next is Rocker's Review. Hey Rockers, today here on Rockers Review, we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorite bands, Neck Deep. I'm here with Ian. Ian, all right, fill me in. What is your favorite Neck Deep album? Um, personally, I love Life's Not Out to Get You, but I would say because I saw it live, I love Peace and the Panic. It's probably one of my favorite albums. Uh, a lot of stylistic changes and a lot of stylistic uh. experiments that they put into that album it uh, kind of resonated with me. I really did like it. And seeing it live makes it all that much better. Oh, definitely. And it's definitely a lot different than Life's Not Out To Get You. Life's Not yeah. Out To Get You, which is what, their third album? I third studio so. album? I believe. Yeah, third studio album. That is my personal favorite. I just connect to that album very personally. You know, got me through some tough times. A great, it's just, it's just awesome. It's like, it, it's just like, to me, their iconic album. But yeah. Peace and the Panic was amazing, but just in its own different way. Like, it, I, I agree. 
was a lot of just very different things. They moved away from more of that like very, I mean, generic pop punk. Yeah. That they kind of like, you know, are like they deem themselves to be and move towards just like more of like a rock type. Yeah, and especially with uh, Peace and the Panic, how it kind of talks about how um, Terry, Barlow, uh, Terry Barlow, Ben Barlow's father passing away mm -hmm. very, very suddenly last year. Or it was maybe two years ago. Can't quite remember the. Yeah, I think the year. I think I read somewhere that um, b both the albums, like somebody in the band, like their father passed away. Like I yeah. think Knife's Not Out to Get You. I, I don't know who it was, but I know someone's father passed away. And then in Peace and the Panic, I think it was yeah, uh, his dad that passed yeah. away. Yeah, and one of the theories that I've had about Peace and the Panic, kind of <laughs> like working my way through the album, I kind of thought of how it constantly talks about this atomic bomb dropping and like yes. destroying humanity. And I kind of thought of like the traumatic experience no, of losing yeah. that loved one, like. Uh, I really do like that, especially I uh, Wish You Were Here is a beautiful, beautiful yes, acoustic ballad. and I think 1970-something um, is, yes. that, that, that's the song I think that's probably like dedicated to... Oh, more than, more than that, anything. Yeah, this, yeah, that's a beautiful song too, like that, like that, those parts, like that part of the album is definitely like, you can definitely see some inspiration from like that traumatic event, and I think one of my favorite songs in the album is Happy Judgment Day. Yes, And I, I love, I just love it poking fun, they do, and even Don't Wait. There's a yeah. lot of anti-government themes going on in this album, especially even with the album artwork, you know, the yeah. piece and the panic. So I think that's like something that definitely drew a lot of inspiration for yeah. the band because there's a lot of like anti- and, it, and honestly, Don't Wait is a very interesting song because we have Sam, Sam, Sam Carter. Carter. Yeah, very like, we get some, I was very, very the first time, vocals. yes, the first time I listened to that song is Neck Deep is, um, for those of you that don't know, Neck, Neck Deep is more, I'd say, generic pop punk is the yeah, best way that, I can that's describe exactly it. exactly how they so describe I was listening, themselves. I was listening to this song, and all of a sudden I just heard, like, screamo, and yeah. I was like, I was like, Neck Deep, what are you doing? Like, I was into it, though. I, I did yeah, like I it. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely really, really liked it, and it's, at first, I, at first I didn't like it, because I was like, I don't really like screamo, I'm not a big, big screamo fan, mm -hmm. but the more I got to, like, listen to it, I was like, you, you got into it. Yeah, yeah. it's a very, because it's a very, like, if you're ever just, like, fired up, it's just a really great song to listen yeah. to. So that's, like, um, definitely uh, one of my, that's, like, one of my favorite songs. It's probably um, the song I'm most excited to see perform live because yeah. they actually, uh, if anyone is in the Pittsburgh area, they're actually um, performing. Um, I'm going this week, this uh, Thursday, the 27th. Yeah, in Millville. In Millville, Mr. Small's Theater. I'm going to see them. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I haven't seen the, um, I've never seen the Peace and the Panic perform yeah. live because I saw them two years ago. The first time I saw them was two years ago at Warp Tour, and that was um, they were just performing "Life's Not Out to Get You," and I didn't really know them as well then. But uh, now I'm like a huge fan, and I'm just super um, stoked to see them. I think it's going to be a great show. And I agree, like because last year I saw them at Warp Tour, so I got to kind of see the Peace and the Panic live. Mm. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. But <laughs> it's it's it, it rocked your socks off. Oh, uh, I know. I think whenever they were at Warp Tour, there was like two songs that were out that they might have performed. I can't Possibly, remember. Yeah. I can't remember. I know like they like hadn't. They, they played, I think, three songs off of the new album whenever they were yeah, at Warped Tour. Yeah, because I remember when I went to Warped Tour 1, I saw them, they had like three songs that were out. I think it was like, Where We Go, When We Go, Happy Judgment, Judgment Day. Day, and I think Motion Sickness like came out like a few days before. Yeah, it was like two or three days before. Yeah, so I'm definitely really excited. I've already, look, I've already looked up the set list. Oh, have um, you? Yeah, I looked at the set list. Um, I'm ready to go. They're playing a really good variety, I think. They're playing everything from Rain in July, um, oh, Wishful wow. Thinking, Life's Not Out to Get You, which is the one I'm most excited yeah. for because that's my favorite album. But yeah, I'm really super excited. All right, rockers, let us know what you think about Neck Deep, if you're a fan, and what album you like better, and we'll see you next time. Paul Simon said farewell to his fans at his last concert ever in Queens, New York on September 22nd. He played 26 songs in his set at Flushing Corona Park, which ended in two separate encores. Flushing is where Paul Simon grew up, so the location was rather close to his heart. He decided to play here because of this saying. It feels more like fate than coincidence that I should do a final show on the final tour at Flushing Meadows Corona Park, and continued on to say, I could have ridden my bike from home to the park in about 20 minutes when I was a kid, but this is less a goodbye than a farewell. Thank you all for the ride, I had a great time. Earlier this month, Simon also released a new album called The Blue Light to play on his final tour. This album featured reworked versions of his most popular songs from earlier albums. He also had many collaborations on this album with other artists such as Bryce Dessner and Y Music. Simon hinted at making appearances to do single time performances, but did make clear on this tour Homeward Bound was the final tour ever. Either way, it's sad to know that he, this will be the last performance ever from Paul Simon. He definitely is another music legend whose music will be known throughout the ages. Kanye West tweeted on Saturday, September 22nd, that he believes some social media users are driven to suicide because of their lack of engagement with their followers. 
In the tweet, he said that there are people committing suicide due to not getting enough likes, seeking validation in the simulation. Kanye also made comments earlier saying how he suggests that social media platforms should have the opinion to shut off comments, likes, retweets, and favorites on posts by users. On September 20th, he tweeted, we should all be able to participate in social media without having to show how many followers or likes we have. This is an intense negative impact on our self-worth. To back this statement, he also said how he believes the amount of likes that someone gets on their social media is related to how much money they make or if they, in quotes, write the size of their on their t-shirt. <laughs> Aside from this statement, Kanye has also been posting cryptic social media messages which could be hinting at new music from the artist. Last Monday, he revealed that Yandi is to be the musical guest on September 29th's episode of Saturday Night Live, followed by a photo showing a CD that looks similar to his Yeezus album cover. Yeezus was a play on Jesus, so therefore there are theories that Yandi is a play on Gandhi, which is only going to fuel suspicion for a new album. It's good to know that a famous artist like Kanye West is recognizing the dangers in social media. There have been many studies to prove that social media can have a negative effect on your self-esteem. It only makes sense. Kanye even posted that, that likes on social media can't fabricate love. That's some deep stuff. On a brighter note, Check This Out is up next. Today we have EJ Fabiszewski in the studio for the second episode of IRB Season 7. EJ is from Pittsburgh and we'll be playing a few songs for us here today. Here she is. Alright, so this is Take On Me. Talking away, I don't know what I'm to say or sing. Another day to find you shine away. It's no better to be safe than sorry. Take on me. Take me on. I It's no better to be safe than sorry. Take on me, take on me, take me on, take on me, I'll be gone. And I'd say, oh, take on me, take on me. is never going to give you up. When you're strangers to love, you know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment is what I'm thinking of. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. We've known each other for so long, yeah, hearts been aching. Shine to see inside. 
glad we both know what's been going on. You know the game and we are gonna play it. And if you ask me how I'm feeling, don't you tell me you're too blind to see. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie. Are you? Never gonna get. Never gonna give. Give you up. Never gonna get. Never gonna give, never gonna give, give you a heart. Never gonna give, never gonna give, give you a heart. Oh. Never gonna give you a I'm never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. What's up, everybody? You just heard some great tunes from EJ. She joined me now. Thank you so much for coming down yeah. to the studio today. No problem. You sounded great on that acoustic guitar. Um, how long have you been playing for? Um, I've had a guitar for a while, but I think I only started like seriously playing for like two years. I did like chords and stuff since eighth grade, but that's not like I really started doing like every day like two years ago. Cool. And did you start on acoustic or electric? Um, I started on acoustic, and then I moved to electric. I actually started on piano before all of that. Oh, really? But it was easier. Like I can't do like prog solos on a piano. It just yeah. doesn't sound right. So. Yeah, it's tough. Um, was it like a keyboard or was it like? Yeah, I was a keyboard. Nice. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to start it off, especially with like music theory and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I tried starting with guitar, and moving to piano. Do you find it easier to go from? I mean, obviously you don't have a frame of reference for the opposite, but. Was piano to guitar an easy transition for you? Um, it was okay. Piano, you can see all the notes easier, so you know where it is, but also you could hear it. Like, it was easier, like, I could think of what the piano note was and then put it into guitar. Right, and you don't need to tune it all the time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> pretty made, much. Some people get up on stage and they spend half their set tuning <laughs> Dude, and talking yeah. into the microphone. <laughs>
You uh, have definitely got a presence on YouTube. You want to tell us a little bit about that? I started a YouTube channel like two years ago because I was in my school's talent show and my aunt couldn't make it, so she's like, well, upload it on YouTube. And then I started to make more videos, and right now I have 355 subscribers. Nice. So we're getting there. What's it called so that everybody can check it out at home? EJ Fabashevsky. My last name is a mouthful, but. Fabashevsky. You'll see it, and it'll be on the bottom of this video, so make sure you check out our YouTube. Maybe we'll even link it. Maybe we'll link it. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we love those covers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, is this your first time on IRB? Yeah. I can't really recall it. Are you a freshman here? Yeah. Oh, nice. Sweet. It was nice to have some uh, young people on the show. Sometimes we have the same guests back and we get to see uh, them as they progress. So this maybe will be the first of many, I hope. Hopefully we'll have you back in the future. Uh, how's I, uh, IUP been treating you so far? It's pretty all right, I would say. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a fair judgment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see that you found the open mic community. How's that been going for you? Um, it's pretty cool. I, I like being around people that also like music and that's all I want to do half the time so it's nice being around other people that also share similar interests. Yeah, it's nice to have open ears and people who, uh, because they want to share and be listened to, they're willing to sit and be quiet and listen. It's hard to find people these days that are a patient yeah. and quiet audience, you know? Which I suppose is why YouTube is nice because you're putting it out there and then it's done. You yeah. know what I mean? There's no more interaction between mm -hmm. the, uh, the people. Do you have like uh, any YouTubers that you like? Any, uh, any, any cover artists? Any, any um, channels that you dig? Not really, I kind of just watch stuff all around. Like I like to watch other people that are like small YouTubers, like also have around the same amount of subscribers as me and like I learn off them and cool. like vice versa. See, it's like a small community and then they all comment on everyone's and it's like, yeah. it's nice. Or like they also tell you when you mess up like, oh, that last note was kind of garbage. <laughs> like they let you know what's wrong too, so that's useful. Yeah, YouTubers can be rough <laughs> down in the comments. I, I just recently started diving into the comment game. And <laughs> I, I don't know why. I don't know what that says about me, but <laughs> I'm officially one of those YouTube, YouTube comments. Commenters. Um, so uh, what do you have planned coming up? Do you, are you going to be playing any shows or are you just going to keep it low key and keep working on covers for YouTube? Right now I'm just doing YouTube stuff and trying to meet other people. I had a band in high school but two of them are still in high school and the other ones are kind of just sprawled out everywhere and it's hard to find people that want to also play like certain things in a band format too because everyone wants to kind of do their own thing. So I'm working on finding that. Once I do that, I'm up for like gigs and stuff. I've performed a couple of gigs with my band before, but it's hard to like get them together now that I'm like at IUP. Cool. Well, there's certainly a lot of places around uh, campus and a lot of things on uh, WIUP FM that will certainly welcome you with your cool songwriting abilities and uh, your cover abilities. I mean, it's it's interesting to hear a song you've never, in a way you've never heard before. You might like hear the difference in the, the lyrics or the guitar part you'd never heard. Yeah. Uh, do you do you ever? Uh, do you ever pull something that's just, it doesn't work out? You ever try a cover oh, yeah. that doesn't work? <laughs> well, sometimes what I do is I like to write music, but only like the instrumental stuff. Like I can really come up with chords and stuff and harmonies. I can even come up with like the lyric or like the voicings, but I suck at words. So when I take other people's stuff, I'll pull up like the tablature and look at it and be like, oh, well, let's pretend I've never heard that song and do it how I do it. Right. Yeah, I like that idea. And it's it, that's kind of an interesting part about tablature is it gives you such little information. Mm -hmm. that it doesn't you even kind give of... you the rhythm or anything either. Right. It's just yeah. like, here's some numbers. And it's a great way to learn new chords and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Another great way to learn chords is Nick Dark's lessons here on IRB. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Nick's going Nick's to gonna come on later and teach us some tunes. I don't but, Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. We really appreciate yeah. you uh, spending the time to talk with me and just get to know you a little bit. EJ Fabiszewski, check her out on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of IRB. We hope you got your fill of everything music for the week. Next time, tune in to see a performance by Julia. Follow us on social media at Indie Rockers Ball or at IRB TV for more updates on your music news. See you around, rockers.